You know, it doesn't seem like that long ago that I was in that one car garage all by myself installing a lift kit on this 95 GMC Suburban. Since then, I've done a bit of off-roading, driven in dirt, snow, and everything in between. And of course, I've also driven this thing on the road, towing, and all that good stuff. So by now, I have a really, really good idea on this Rough Country two to three inch lift kit, which is really a torsion key lift, but they do it right by dropping the front differential. And I thought this would be a good time to let you all know what I think of the lift. Well, right off the bat, let's talk about looks. I'm gonna say it's a good eight or nine out of 10 in that regard. I'm not gonna give it a 10 out of 10 because this lift kit actually raises the front end more than it raises the back end. So in the rear, there's two inch blocks and that's it. Your truck is raised two inches from its original factory stance. In the front though, it is a bit of a gray area because well, you get new upper control arms, you get new torsion keys, and that's to help you crank those torsion bars. And once you crank those torsion bars, it's kind of a guess as to how much lift you're gonna get. And the other side of that coin is you just don't know how much you're gonna have to crank them, regardless of how much you want to crank them, but how much you're gonna have to crank them in order to be able to get this thing aligned properly. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But as for looks, I'm gonna say an eight out of 10. This thing definitely went from grandpa's grocery getter to a solid looking overlander. What do you guys think about the looks? Give me a one through 10 comment down below. Next, let's talk a little bit about the install of the lift. As I mentioned, I was in a one car garage. Okay, let's call it a one and a half car garage. It was a little bit wider than usual. And I simply used my jack and jack stands I was on my back a large part of the time dealing with the front differential and that was a bear. But overall with the instructions and all of the parts and how everything fit, I'm gonna give it about an eight also. There was one or two things that I definitely had a huge question about. And I did put in a call or two or three to Rough Country to try to get those questions cleared up. And although they were nice every time I called, I didn't really get super clear answers every time I had to call. One of those phone calls and questionable parts was this bracketry they used to help drop the front differential. They were essentially these little spacer tabs that essentially dropped the normal area that the front differential bolted up to just down a little bit lower, I think about two inches. And there was a couple of problems with that part. Number one, it didn't fit where the directions said to put it. I did have to use my angle grinder and make some modifications to make it fit. Not that big of a deal, but when I did call to try to figure all this out, the answer wasn't super clear either. And so I just kind of had to do what I thought was best to do. Now, I did get it all dialed. Everything was good to go on that regard. But then I went to go throw the bolts in and lo and behold, the bolts actually didn't fit through, I believe it was my frame side of where that bracketry mounted, if that makes sense. So you can imagine with just those two little things not fitting and not working out exactly like it was supposed to, it ends up taking a heck of a lot more time and you have to deal with phone calls and just overall frustration trying to get it to work. Other than that, I can't really think of any major issues that I had installing this thing. It was a bear trying to deal with that front differential on my own without a you know jack for that thing. And I did have to remove that front differential completely and do a lot of grinding on some cooling fins just to get it to fit back up there with the included brackets and everything from the lift kit. So that was kind of a hassle I wish they could have maybe designed it in a different way that you didn't have to do that. But overall, that wasn't that big of a deal, just took a lot of time. As you can imagine with the rear blocks, it was extremely easy. The biggest headache was all in the front end. So as for that fit and finish, the product that I actually installed and the difficulty and you know, did all the parts work out like they were supposed to and the phone calls and the directions and all that, I'm gonna give it an eight. It was pretty good. Well, let's move right along to the performance of the lift kit. Now, of course, this is a lower cost lift kit. It was about 600 or so dollars when I purchased it. And so I knew it wasn't going to be a trophy truck once I was done installing it. That's not what this was at all. And I did do quite a bit of research before I made the decision to purchase this lift kit. I did want to know what other people thought and Rough Country on their own website does have reviews from people who have bought and installed this lift kit. So that was pretty helpful. 
And the options I was weighing at the time were obviously this lift kit, the two to three inch torsion key lift, their four inch lift kit, which I thought was a bit too much for what I wanted. And I was weighing a body lift. I weighed the pros and cons of all of these, read a bunch of reviews, and the two to three inch torsion lift just seemed to fit the bill for what I wanted. My goals definitely weren't outrageous. I of course wanted it to look better, especially since I was gonna be putting a little bit larger tires on this thing. But the main part of it for me was the performance. I wanted this thing to not only be lifted up a little bit to fit the bigger tires, but to also perform well off-road. And not that I'm rock crawling or anything, because I'm definitely not. Those are not my aspirations. I'm building this thing to be an overlander, just to be an exploring vehicle. But as we all know, 99% of our driving is on road. And so of course, not only does it have to perform well off-road, it has to perform much better on road. And so now let's get into the performance of this lift kit. All right, this is something I can talk about for a long time and there's good reason. Let me preface this by saying this is the first lifted truck that I've ever owned, the first lift kit that I've ever installed, although I did follow those directions to a T and installed it exactly according to those directions. And like I said, I even put in phone calls when I wasn't exactly clear on things or things didn't quite seem to work or fit right. So as far as the install goes, while I'm no master technician, I do have common sense and I did put in phone calls and I did read those instructions many times over. So the installation should be spot on according to the directions, should be. So keep all that in mind with what I'm about to say. Okay, so the lift, how does it perform? I'm gonna give it probably a five out of 10 in that regard. And that might sound a bit harsh. This is rough country, right? They've been around forever. They know what they're doing. I get it. They make good products. I know. And some of you may even have this lift kit and absolutely love it. If you do, by the way, comment down below and let me know. But as for me, the one thing I really dislike with this lift kit is the fact that you have to crank the torsion bars, thereby stiffening up the springs because those torsion bars are the springs and the ride just gets a whole heck of a lot more harsh, but that's only half of it. There's another side to that story that no one ever talks about. Let me show you what it is. Okay, with this type of lift, in order to get the lift, you have to crank your torsion keys. The torsion keys then put tension on the torsion bar and that torsion bar, which you see right here, goes right into the lower control arm. And what essentially happens is it forces your wheel down, raising the truck up. Pretty simple, right? It is, it's very simple. And not only that, and I've already touched a little bit on this, Rough Country gives you brackets to lower the front differential two inches, and that's to keep the angles on the CV axles good. Without lowering that front differential, your CV axles would be at such an extreme angle, it would ruin them really quick. So that's what I meant when I said they do it right by lowering that front differential to accommodate the torsion key lift. And aside from that rougher ride because of the more tension on the torsion bars, there's two problems that I'm having. And this is the big stuff. This is exactly why I wanted to make this video. Number one, and these are in no particular order because they all kind of go hand in hand, is the alignment. The alignment shop I took it to specialized in unique situations like lifted trucks and lowered cars and stuff like that. I'm trying to figure out how I can sum this up into a somewhat short story. All right, so here it goes. In order to get this thing aligned, I had to crank the torsion keys so much because I had so much positive camber. In other words, the top of this tire was poked out so much. There wasn't enough adjustability on those alignment tabs on the upper control arms in order to be able to suck that tire back into where it needed to be for proper alignment. <gasps> You kind of catch my drift. So I'm not gonna lie, this was a back and forth, back and forth to the alignment shop a few times. Luckily for me, they were really cool and were willing to work with me on this. So the bottom line is, in order to get this thing aligned properly, I had to crank those torsion bars so much, it almost maxed them out. And what do I mean by that? Let me show you. Okay, taking a look at the upper and lower control arms here behind the tire, you can see that upper control arm is literally almost resting on what I call the droop stop. So looking right here at this upper control arm, you can see the droop stop there, and you can see this upper control arm has literally no space between the upper control arm and the droop stop. Basically what that means is once it hits that droop stop, that's it. There's no more downward travel. Now you can see the truck is on a bit of a slope there, 
So maybe that tire is down a little bit more than it normally would be on a completely level surface, but I'm telling you, not by much. Now I know some of you know exactly what I'm talking about, and for some of you, this may be the first time you've ever seen or are hearing about this issue. That is the biggest problem with torsion key lifts, is that droop stop. I know I sound like a broken record, but when you crank those torsion keys, it pushes those control arms down, and those control arms come very, very close to that droop stop, that droop stop is what essentially stops or limits the travel downward of your control arms. Now, if that droop stop wasn't there, you could potentially ruin a lot of things. I don't know, your CV axles, your brake lines, you know, things like that. So the droop stop has to be there. It's there from the factory. In case it's not already crystal clear, the problem with there being no space left between that upper control arm and that droop stop is that I have no more downward travel. Now picture this. I'm on the freeway doing the speed limit, 70 miles an hour, and the freeway starts to be wavy like this, or maybe there's a quick drop off. Well, once those upper control arms hit that droop stop, there's no more downward movement, and therefore my tire will leave the ground. And once it hits that ground again, you're gonna hear a chirp, and that's not fun. It doesn't sound safe, it's not safe, and it's not fun. Now, part of this lift was new upper control arms from Rough Country, and I'm not exactly sure if that's where the problem was with the alignment issues, thereby having to crank the torsion keys too much, and you know, those torsion bars being too close to that droop stop. I just, I'm not an engineer. I don't really know exactly where the problem lies. But those are the two biggies, and they are biggies. The alignment. Everyone wants their truck to drive straight, and you don't want to ruin your tires. And aside from that, the whole purpose of having a truck that is capable of going off-road is travel, wheel travel. If you have no downward travel or very little, what's the point, right? With all of that being said, and I know it kind of sounds like I'm whining here, and I kind of am a little bit, but I'm allowed to. I paid for this thing, installed it. I've driven it for a very long time. With all of that being said, and I do want to give a shout out to the Bilstein 4600s you've seen under there. Those shocks are absolutely incredible. Another part of this lift kit was four new shocks from Rough Country. And I have to say, at least in my experience, those shocks were borderline unusable. They provided basically no dampening whatsoever. And that freeway example I gave you a little earlier, when my wheels would leave the ground and chirp when they hit the ground again, yeah, they were doing that when I was using the Rough Country shocks. Just no dampening at all. Once I put my Bilstein 4600s back on, it largely took care of that problem. Not all the way, but a lot of the way. Okay, all of that being said, I'm gonna be removing the lift. You heard that right. I'm taking it off my truck. I've lived with it now for long enough, and unfortunately, after installing it, fiddling with it, getting it aligned, not being happy, fiddling with it again, getting it realigned again, and still not being happy. Many thousands of miles traveled on road, towing and whatnot, driving it off road in the dirt and snow. It just doesn't seem safe to me. It's the one thing that's always in the back of my mind when I'm driving this thing. If I hit a bump that's too big or a shelf in the road where my tires wanna drop down but can't, it just doesn't feel safe to me. It doesn't feel like a factory vehicle should feel. So yeah, I'm gonna take this thing off. But here's the downside to that. I can't remove the drop on the front differential. I had to cut off a factory bracket and install the new brackets, and so that front differential is going to be permanently lowered two inches. But there is a silver lining to this. Basically, what I'm gonna remove is the Rough Country upper control arms and the torsion keys that they provided. I'm gonna refurbish my entire front end, including my original factory upper control arms. I'm gonna redo all the ball joints, the bushings, everything. And I'm gonna return this thing back to factory. I'm gonna use my original torsion keys because there was plenty of adjustability left in those. And once I have those factory upper control arms on and I have some of that height removed, I'm gonna take it and get it realigned. And yes, I will lose some height in the front, but that's okay. I honestly don't like that the front sits higher than the back. That's not the look that I want. What I'm really hoping I get out of all of this is a better alignment and more downward travel, which should give me a safer and more secure ride on the road. Whew. So if you stuck with me through all of that, thank you guys. Hit that thumbs up if you haven't already. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, consider subscribing. I'm Jimmy for One Road. This is my 95 GMC Suburban. And I'm assuming the next time you see a video from me, we're gonna be working on the front end, tearing this whole thing down. So if you wanna see all that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel. I will see you in the next one.